वेलकम बैक एवरी वन सो टूडे वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वन ऑफ माई फेवरेट नोट्स इन मैश दैट इज रैंडम नोट इट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग नोट इट अलाउज यू टू रैंडमाइज योर ऑब्जेक्ट एंड स्कैटर दम अलॉन्ग द सर्फेस टू क्रिएट अ यूनिक ब्लेंड ऑफ योर ऑब्जेक्ट सो लेट्स क्विकली गेट इन टू इट एंड सी हाउ इट वर्क सो आई गोना स्टार्ट ऑफ बाई टेकिंग सिंपल प्लेन नाउ इमेजिन लाइक दिस इज सम काइंड ऑफ सर्फेस और सिंपल ग्राउंड दैट यू आर क्रिएटिंग सम काइंड ऑफ uh debris or let's say rocks or a lot of something like that so i'm going to take a sphere and i'm just going to let's quickly triangulate it and we'll reduce it just to create this um unique looking kind of like a low poly stone or something like that let's have at least this much all right uh so this looks good i'm going to quickly harden the edge now i have something that looks like this what i'm going to do is select this go to your mesh click on mesh and we have our distribute node going on now in the distribute uh, i'm going to keep it like this only but what we want to have is our random node here so first of all i'm going to click on here and add random node instantly you will notice that it starts to randomize everything for example you have the position x y z now i'm going to turn everything off now before getting into the randomized node i'm going to quickly set up my whole scene for our stone so we have a distribution type to linear let's quickly change this to maybe like having a mesh and in our mesh we'll middle mouse click on our plane and drop it onto our input mesh and there we go so now our objects are being scattered on top of that plane now i can increase the number of uh, stones or our spheres as much as we want now from here what i can do is i can go back to my random node so the first thing that we have on our random node is position you can randomize the position of your objects you can also randomize on the y axis and you can also randomize them in the x axis and the cool thing about the random node is what i can do with my random node is i can rotate each one of them and i can also scale them now obviously we can we don't want to scale uh, different axes so what we can do is we can click on uniform scale and we only have to move one scale to randomize all of them now if you'll notice that uh, from here what uh, what's happening is we are using a uniform scale and we are going in a positive direction what's uh, let's say we want to have like a negative uh, value on it so what we can do is we can go to our mesh and we can have our offset node and let's maybe type in a negative value of our main scale value of our object which is a negative 1 and from here what i can do is i can go back to my mesh and i can start scaling this to the original value and now i have something that looks like this so from here i can start uh, getting into how i want this and i can go to my distribute i can have more number of points or more number of stones i want to have and then in the offset i can obviously change the rotation or i want to move them somewhere like that i can move them along uh not so much in the y axis but if you want to have let's say you can and uh, so yeah this is pretty much it uh, like the basic stuff of the randomize let's talk about what is interesting apart from this in the random node you can obviously change the randomization you can normalize the rotation you can change the transformation space from world to local if you want now the good thing about uh, random is you can change the strength overall how much it affects consider this like add, uh, adding a blending value to your randomized node uh, and you can change the blending mode like uh, it's let's say it's an additive mode so you can change the strength from 0% opacity to 100% opacity so this is how you can control the randomization as well how much randomization you want the overall strength of your random node and if you want a step wise you can also do that so that is a pretty interesting thing you can also add a strength map where you have a black and white or let's say alpha mat values in a map like a displacement map or height height map you can directly plug that into your strength map and that will activate as a strength map as well uh which will control the overall strength uh now the interesting part is the fall off this is a pretty interesting stuff if i right click here and if i click on create you notice that we'll have this amazing fall off going on and everything that is inside of this fall off will be affected by the random node so what i can do is i can select uh, this fall off i can hit w and i can start moving them and once i move my fall off you'll notice that our rocks are being moved so let's say i don't want to have my rock somewhere in the middle only all around the corners so what i can do is i can click on invert fall off and that way i'll have something that looks like this so we can maybe add a tree in the middle or something like that we can change the inner zone however we like and we can also change the scalar value 
of how you like this you can also change the shape of this to something like a cube if you want to have more fun and you can also change the fall of ramp of how it's affecting the fall of areas and so on and uh, if you want to have like a really crazy one you can start having that as well so this is a pretty interesting uh, approach to this uh, randomized node which and you can also change the blending mode to like maybe add or remove and so on which is pretty interesting now i'm going to take the same example to create something different with the randomizer i'm going to quickly get rid of this and let's get rid of this as well all right so let's say you have like a sphere all right and i'm going to click on mesh and uh, let's go to maybe like a radial and in the radial we'll have something like x and z all right so we have somewhere around 18 clones and in simpler way, when you click on random, what you can do is I'm just going to change the position X and Y to zero. So now you have something that looks like this bell kind of thing and so on. So I'm going to keep it to somewhere around four. And again, I'm going to click on uniform scales so just so we can change the scalar value of each of them. All right. From here, I'm going to go back to my mesh. Let's add an offset node. We'll go and add a negative one. So we have a randomized value which is going from 0 to 100 and I'm just going to add something like this and that's it. So in the distribute I'm going to add more and more clones in here and maybe if you want to have less random, uh, randomized on the y axis we can do that and we'll have something that looks like this and it is pretty uh, when you're creating a lot of abstract stuff it's pretty interesting to control something that looks like this and again you can have a fall off to go along with it and you can do something like this where you can pretty much transform this to create this kind of interesting animation looking stuff you can do a similar stuff uh, with the i've seen a lot of artists doing uh, different kind of stuff just a second let me just get rid of this i've seen a lot of artists do a lot of uh, cube stuff with uh, the motion graphics and everything let's say you have a default uh, cube you can go to your mash and in the distribute node you can have a grid and what we can do is we can have a grid of maybe like something like three and we'll add a three 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 let's maybe add a two all right so we have something that looks like this now what we can do is we can go back in here and we'll add a random and with our random selected uh, Obviously, we can do our positioning, but we don't want to have our positioning. What we do want is a uniform scale and we'll have a scale value of one. Now, from here, again, we want to add one offset. This is for just who wants a negative scale. You don't ha actually have to do it every time you, you're using the scale. I just want uh, a simple fall off that is going from zero to 100 or a larger value. Uh, otherwise, you can just click on the absolute to use that as well. Now, from here, you can again create a fall off and from here if you'll go like this you'll notice that you get this interesting looking cubic animation and you can always go back uh, into your random and maybe change the different orientation and let's say maybe you want to have like a rotation value and this way you can have it if you get rid of the offset completely uh, you can still access your fall off and that will just give you this kind of animation let me just go back uh, there you go so you can have this so you, either you can have a negative value or you just want to have some kind of rotation going on and something like this like for example if you want to go negative you can't actually that's why i'm using the offset node so just so we can get into the negative scale uh, anyways uh, so you can use a specific rotation you want to move them along any surfaces let's say x or a little bit of on the z side so you have this cube looking thing and then you can start slowly animating and deforming them and this will just give you a little bit interesting result now for those who likes to render a lot of geometry and set a kind of thing i have this small building set which i have modeled and uh, brought in here from a different program and this is what a uh, simply basic building structure which is not so hard to model now we are going to be using this to create a cinematic scene so let's say let's start off by taking a simple plane this will act as our ground and i'm going to just reduce the number of polygons because we don't need so many and with our building selected now remember we have a lot of buildings in here so we'll obviously need our id node 
So we have around uh, eight of these models. So we'll use an ID of eight and we'll also use offset uh, just so if you wanna change the amount of scale value they have. So I'm gonna click on mash. We have the whole mash thing going on. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly take the ID node and I'm gonna set this to somewhere around like eight. And let's just go here and uh, in the distribute i'm going to change this to like maybe a mesh and uh, let's select this sorry distribute and plane and drop it and there you go so now what mash is doing is it's calculating the whole group into this uh, mash thing which we don't want so i guess we have to revert this completely i'm going to bring this outside let's quickly get rid of our group Okay, so let's select our building and let's click on mash and there you go. Um, so we have number of point eights. Let's quickly take our ID node. Now we have eight and we can go to our distribute. Let's click on mesh and we can drop in our plane. And there you go. So now we have something that looks like this. I'm gonna keep a number to somewhere around like maybe uh, 150. All right, this looks quite good let's quickly go to our mash click on offset let's use maybe like a negative 0 0.50 not a complete zero uh negative one we want some scalar value of our object and from the game changing part we'll use our mash random and now we can start uh, scattering them i don't want any y-axis i just want this and uh, we'll have some kind of rotation going on not on this only on this and let's scale this to maybe like one or maybe like like two or maybe like 1.5 all right this looks good i'm gonna go back to my distribute and i'll have somewhere around 200 okay this looks quite good now what i'm gonna do is go back in my randomized node let's create a fall off and uh, we'll create a fall off like this and in the fall off let's double click on it and invert this completely to have something like this okay i think we want to maybe have more geometry in here let's have a 250 and i'm going to keep uh, changing the scale value and let's maybe reduce the plane let's crunch it and let's go to the random node again uh, and i want to just change some random seed value just so we have a different variation and in the fall off i'm gonna just increase this and let's have something let's go back let's change this and okay looks good in the distribute i'm gonna change again all right, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly create a camera, a very high focal length camera. Let's maybe go for something like 150, all right? And we'll have a view like this. And we'll have a resolution of 1K for now, just so we can fit everything in a simple portrait looking thing. Something like this. And let's lock our camera. And I'm going to go into the perspective and we'll have just a giant sphere sitting on top of it, just like this. And that's it. All right. Now from here, what I can do is I'm going to just quickly add some material to make it look interesting. I'm going to have a black uh, and probably have a finish of matte white. And for the buildings, I'm going to add another standard surface. We'll do the same. We'll have like a grayer value, maybe metalless value of 0.2 and we'll have a higher roughness value. And for the lighting, we'll have just one area light quickly. This is just a quick demonstration of what you can do. You don't have to do the same. This is just a small example of what can be achieved with this. And I'll have something that looks like this. Let's quickly get on with the IPR. And in the IPR, I'm going to increase the exposure. Let's see. Maybe like 15, maybe. Yeah, there you go. And just to make it a little more interesting, what we can do is, um, let's quickly switch to GPU. Let's have a 10. And also in the environment, we'll have atmospheric volume. Let's have a density of 1. 
0.1 actually and i think it's going to blast off as we hit render let's see all right so it's uh, the light is completely blasting off so i'm gonna reduce the exposure to something like this let's maybe have like a smaller spread of value we'll use a small temperature and maybe let's reduce the amount of volume in it and let's switch our camera all right so yeah there you go and i'm just gonna dock this here let's close this and i'm gonna quickly change my angle let's click here and there you go so now we have something that looks like this pretty abstract looking and if you want to have a little bit more interesting approach to this what you can do is uh, maybe rotate your where is our light yeah there you go and maybe let's rotate our light bring this up and scale this down a bit and maybe change the shape to a disk and have a cooler tone to it increase the exposure to maybe like 9 yeah there you go 12 yeah and now this way you'll have something that looks like a bit more abstract looking so with a uh, lot of building and so and so on everything you'll get this quick and easy and uh, abstract looking stuff a uh, bit of a sci-fi thing so if you can just create few dummies uh, inside of your model modeling project, you can create a lot of instances with it and you can randomize them across everything, your floor and your tunnel and everything that you have. So it's a pretty interesting approach. It opens up a lot of uh, doors to your motion graphics as well as your project, whatever you're creating and the way you create instances um, for your 3D project. So I think uh, this will really help you create those fancy looking renders and help you get things done a little bit more faster. So have fun with this node. It is one of my personal favorite nodes. Uh, it really creates a unique look to your entire design. So have fun with it. If you have any question, feel free to ask me and I'll see you next time.